Okay, good evening, people. How are you doing? Welcome to Sports Therapy Association podcast, episode 46. Hope you're well. Hope you're buzzing a little bit about developments in the industry and even just walking down the road and seeing people eating together outside. And I hope it's, I mean, I've had a great day. I think it's lovely seeing life kind of returning a bit close to normal and back to doing gate analysis face to face and stuff. So I hope a lot of you, there's been some awfully nice support um in the membership pages and things from therapists who are getting back to work so anyway yeah hope you've got a little bit of optimism and excitement there um so uh obviously this uh, sports therapy association podcast is recorded live on facebook so if you're listening to the podcast then you are welcome to join us live um it's open to non-sta members as well and we've got people coming into the room as we speak and if you do come and join us live then you're able to say hi and your comments and facebook profile picture come up on the screen hey catherine how you doing and becky's in here as well they've all all the, all the regulars have laid their towels down firmly on the sunbeds at the front by the pool already which is great to see um Catherine's already other oh, yeah yeah of course and that's the other great thing you can all book your haircut now who loves a little bit of grooming that's the industry we're in I was having a real interesting chat to my hairdresser today actually just about the same thing as we do where the hairdresser is kind of a middle person for breaking those bonds and talking to people um and and maybe helping give advice it's really interesting with regards to mental health and just people opening up and um, it's really fascinating conversation, but I won't bore you with it now. But it's anyway, so there we go. Um, but if you are listening on the podcast, thanks very much for downloading and listening it. Please do remember to leave um, a review um, and a rating on um, particularly Apple Podcasts. That would be great. Um, and uh, if uh, you use Android, then I'm afraid you have to go to iTunes to do it, I think. But if you're on your iPhone, it takes you two seconds. Just go to your app, leave a rating, review. Bam. I think we're on to, we're not onto enough yet. I would love everybody just to think, right, put it on my things to do. Go and leave a five stars for Sports Therapy Association podcast. Um, all of our videos are also on YouTube if you want to watch uh, the people, the speakers themselves, um, including um, last week's, which was a COVID-19 roadmap, talking about the weeks to come. And um, it was lovely to have members, uh, Daniel Gerber, representing Scotland with, with us, and uh, Gareth Thomas Davis, obviously with a name like that, representing wells and then grenier walsh uh, was here representing northern islands in ireland and um, if you haven't heard that yet it's available on uh youtube um, i don't think i've put it up as a podcast yet but it will go up apologies for that um, but it was yeah it was a lovely chance for people from different regions of the uk to get together and talk about what the future holds and gary founder of the uh, sta was there as well giving pearls of wisdom so yeah um you can catch up with that I should really take Catherine off the screen here. Her message has been up there for far long. So, hey, Sarah. Hey, Brian. Hey, Becky Carroll. Becky Carroll says, I hope my towel is in the shady spot. I quite like that analogy. I was patting myself on the back when I said that. Anyway, so, yes, all um, other episodes are available. Um, do share them if you think it's a topic that could help your colleagues. And just share them. Share them on Facebook or Instagram, wherever you like. Tonight on the show i'm very excited i've got two fantastic guys who um, have graciously given up their time to come and talk to us about um their education pathway to date um they're both first year students doing a master's in sport and exercise science at cardiff university um and one of their tutors there is uh fantastic dr izzy moore who I obviously worship thanks to her contribution to running research. And I've had the pleasure of having her as a speaker at Lunch at Life conference. And she's been on the podcast as well. Um, so you probably hear her name mentioned a few times. If you do want to check out um, some of Izzy Moore, then you well just put a search in Google for research Izzy Moore and it'll come up. But you can see her um, or listen to her and see her on episode 33 of Run Chat Live podcast, which was all about how research helps runners receive evidence-based treatment. And also she was a speaker at Run Chat Live 2019. Uh, she was on day one, speaker five, talking about gate retraining for runners. Um, and she also appears on Run Chat Live 2020, the online one um, last year. Um, again, just dropping some fantastic bombshells, uh, which she manages to do with the help of people like sam and um kieran who are with us here tonight so as always if you've got any questions and feel free just to bring them up on the screen um, a nice chance to pick the brains of people um of how they got to where they are if they're enjoying it if there's any surprises if they'd recommend it 
um, and so forth. So without further ado, I shall bring up Sam Hellard and Kieran Wall. One, two, and we'll get into that. There we go. Hi, guys. Hi, Matt. There we go. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? Thank you very much. I thought suddenly I had this flash of students. You're suddenly both going to appear with weird hats on and with pints of lager in your hands or something. But I realise now we're talking about a far more serious master student, um, not something like that. So thanks so much for giving up your yeah. time. Um, where are you speaking from, Sam? Where are you at the moment? Um, I'm in Brecon, mid Wales. Ah, okay, fantastic. And yeah, Kieran, up in the hills. Yeah, not too far from Sam actually. Um, mid Wales as well. Um, Birmingham, Shrewsbury way, sort of just directly in line with that. About thirty minutes into Wales, basically where I'm at. <laughs> this is interesting because I don't know whether you're aware of. Do you know Mike James, endurance physio Mike James? Have you come across his name at all? Um, not sure. Yeah, though. was he on the? The he was on yeah he was uh yeah he opened oh, up one yeah. chat live 2020 yeah but whenever we connect with him in wells he, he's got a terrible internet connection he always blames it on wells saying oh we've got no internet connection here and <laughs> obviously he's just lying because you two are looking yeah, loud so and not clear too bad here not too bad fantastic right um okay people so we'll start off then so you guys are in your first year of the masters yeah Indeed, yeah. So that means, yep. yeah, fantastic. And that's sport and exercise science. So I guess just to get the ball rolling, maybe one of you all together, well, not at the same time, that'd be difficult. But I just want to know, give people who are listening a chance um, to know what the course is about and why people, most people sign up for it and what they hope to get from it. Okay. Take it away, either. Sam, do you want to go? Head off. Yeah, I'll go. Um... So we're doing a sport and exercise science masters, um, but we're kind of following a biomechanics pathway. Um, so the course is tailored towards specifically sport and injury biomechanics. Um, and then there's other, there's other options you can go down. So you could go down a physiology route or you could go down a psychology route. Um, but me and Kieran are going down the biomechanics pathway. So... Yeah, just more interested in how the body works within, obviously, um, sport and environment and sort of what can affect injury, what movements can obviously cause that and also what movements help aid performance of just sporting individuals, really. What made you both? So obviously you did, you specialised in biomechanics on the degree as well beforehand, but what is it in your lives that kind of led you towards the biomechanics as opposed to the physiology, for example? Um for me uh my main sport is golf um and obviously sort of the driving factor or influence in golf is literally how the body moves um so i think that sort of was always in my head and was able sort of easily able to relate sort of the biomechanics uh learning to the golf swing so i think that is basically why it sort of stuck with me same with psychology i used to enjoy um psychology throughout the years at university as well fantastic and you sam yeah, for me, I um, when I first started studying sport and exercise science, I didn't really know about biomechanics. I really didn't know it was a thing. Um, but then, as we started to progress through the course, we started to get in the lab a bit. We started to mark up um, athletes, and we started to get them on screens and get data and stuff like that. And I just started to really enjoy doing stuff like that and doing studies on athletes. Um, yeah, so I just started to enjoy biomechanics more and more. And I did my dissertation on it um, and just kept on following that route. Where did it, and this is to both of you, where did it all start? Were you kind of doing a totally different job, nine to five, thinking I don't want to do this? Or did it come from your sporting life? Or um, Is in just the university? or no, Just ever, how you got into this interest? Yeah, I think just um, being involved with sport from sort of a young age, always loving just being active, football, rugby golf sort of everything really I've always had a passion for it so when I finished school um, I think that's sort of the main thing that was drawing me was just something to do with sports so yeah just went with it sort of um, jumped at an opportunity to go to college rather than um, go to just what was it A levels and stuff at school because I think my parents sort of wanted me to go down like a engineering sort of science and maths direction but wasn't my um, main interest so yeah just went with Sort of what I enjoyed the most, and yeah, ended up at university doing sport. Fantastic. And you, Sam? Yeah, I just loved um, loved sport 
from a young age. So I just loved playing sport. I did PE and I loved PE. And then as soon as I finished A-levels, I just knew I wanted to um, go to university to study sport. But I didn't really know what I wanted to study within sport. Um, so I did sport and exercise science, kind of a, a broad um, spectrum. And then as soon, like I said, as soon as we got in the lab um, and started markering up and using force plates and collecting data on athletes, I knew then that I, I really enjoyed biomechanics and analysing athletes. What sort of, like you say, oh, yeah, we've got into force plates and marking up athletes and that. What did you need to get to that situation? Were there kind of what entry requirements are you looking at? Because it sounds like you needed kind of like three A's or something just to step through the door. Is that the case? or From what I remember, Sam, I think it wasn't too um, unattainable, was it? I think, I don't know what it was from no. your perspective with A-levels. It might have been B's, was it? Yeah, I think I had maybe two B's and a C. Yeah. Yeah, and then since I went the college route, um, I'm not sure what the entry level was, but again, mm. very achievable. Um, I think that's maybe why you see a lot of, uh, it's such a heavily populated sort of area in university, so. Mm -hmm. And at any point, because I'm interested whether, I wonder whether, and people listening to the show in the comments, I wonder whether there's a little bit of fear when you go down this academic route, um, whether it is going to be too challenging or were there any moments you thought this is, this is too much for me or were you surprised that this is actually this is quite accessible um sam don't know about you but i think when i first got to union sort of stepping up into the sort of technical side of the physiology and also biomechanics um maybe was a little bit daunting but i think the main thing especially with our university we've got a really good team so like you said at the intro we've got um dr dizzy moore she's really great uh hans um just they're all fantastic sort of helping everyone so um yeah very daunting at the start but once you get sort of a uh, sort of linked up with the team you definitely feel uh, more at home it's just easy to have a chat with them and see where you're going wrong or where you might need to improve so yeah wasn't too bad did you i'm interested to know obviously i've i've i'm a big fan of izzy because of the research she's done on running and everything but I wonder whether particularly you, Sam, had you heard of Izzy before because of the research she's done on running or, or on, on rugby or working with the Welsh rugby team? Um, or was that new when you started the course? You thought, oh, that's just a bonus. Yeah, well, I knew Izzy um, from my undergrad because I was in Cardiff Met as well. Hmm. Um, so I kind of knew Izzy um, and I knew that she was involved with the rugby stuff as well. But before I went to uni, I hadn't heard of Izzy. I wasn't really clued up with the research and stuff then. So... But I was yeah. going to say, I mean, I'm feeling really old, but the questions I've got in my head might sound like the campus is really old. But you guys are how old now? 21, 22? 22, yeah. Yeah, 22. 22. And the, you've been on this course for eight months or something. The degree was what, four years or three years? Uh, three years. Three. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to think what I was doing when I was 18, whether I was thinking about doing something like this or have you in this process have you left friends behind do you think you're kind of like the exception to the rule of people who go on to courses like this or do you think it's accessible for a lot of people um i think it is um, very sorry sam uh, i think it is very accessible uh i think especially around by me um mid wales is really not much or definitely not many opportunities so a lot, a lot of people around by me um, sort of get into agriculture. There's a lot of farming uh, colleges and things like that. So I think I was out my friends, probably one of the furthest that sort of moved away for university. But even though it's only Cardiff, it's probably two and a half hours in the car. It's not actually that far. But yeah, a lot of people by me sort of just stayed local, I'd say. Yeah, the same with me, really. Um, there's a couple who went off to uni, but most of them just stayed, stayed local and doing kind of I wouldn't say boring jobs but they're they're pretty bored in the week maybe what they're comfortable with I'd say because I think when I went to uni I was um wasn't very outgoing uh and like I said there's not much by me so in terms of nightlife I wasn't used to that so going to uni I was definitely extremely nervous but definitely the best thing I could have done uh, especially for myself and like personal growth really it was a really big step up but perfect for me fantastic so what about what because a lot of people who in the sports therapy association are predominantly soft tissue therapists and they've gone through the route of um because we're non-regulated doing 
different certificates and different diplomas but a lot of it is basically been hands-on and that's the route which a lot of people in the organ and the association have taken but then then they've suddenly realized after they've heard that what they can do with the hands isn't as much as maybe they were promised originally or th things evolved now they're thinking about i need to add exercise i need to add some kind of strength and conditioning i need to have a look at the science of it or the psychology of it do you do you work with people who have come from that background as well on the course either in the degree or the masters who started off as soft tissue therapists and now they've gone kind of into the more academic side of things uh, i'm not sure about coming from soft tissue i think we have quite a good crossover with snc i'd say sam when it comes especially to yeah. injury sort of rehab um there's definitely a really good link there with snc people um so yeah i'd say that's more the hands-on side of it the snc guys are definitely obviously getting people doing the movements uh technique and all that and i'd say we're maybe more research based would you say sam yeah um i'd say they bridge the bridge the gap quite well as well so you know if you like uh, maybe sports science or biomechanics something like that you can also do S and C, or you can also do some sort of um, rehabilitation modules as well. So um, it's not if you if you put all your eggs in the sport and exercise science camp, you can't do any of the other stuff because there's definitely mm. opportunities to kind of branch out. Yeah, you can choose. I think I had a little look through the course in card. If you can choose just to generalize and everything, can't you? You haven't got to take path. You haven't got to take a pathway. You can just kind of do a bit of everything. Yeah, if that's what you wanted to. Okay, cool. Um, People listening at the moment live joining us, if you've got any questions you'd like to uh, put to Sam or Kieran, then feel free, just type it in. Or if you're listening on YouTube as well, where we're streaming out to, then you're welcome to uh, put some questions. We will see them as well. Um, Joanna Lang talking of questions. Let's bring this up on the screen for the people who are watching us live. Let's have a little look. Joanna Lang says, I met a lot of people with sport, exercise, and physio academic backgrounds that did an add on as soft tissue massage therapists. Uh, like me there we go like me is that something you guys i mean we were talking a little bit um it's a great question by the way joanna we were talking a little bit off air about that do you think people generally go into kind of the research not face to face with real people you know clinic kind of people um or you get people who want to be in the clinic and just read about the research do you think there's a division or do you think sometimes there's a crossover what about you guys for example do you like the idea of rubbing oil into someone's back or is it something you prefer to stay away from um <laughs> i think it's definitely interesting isn't it uh, i've actually got a friend who was doing biomechanics at university um she's now a therapist so a uh, great question john i think like you said there's definitely a link together with the research but also if you can then link that uh, with your sort of hands-on experience uh, that would definitely go hand in hand um, but yeah it, it does interest me definitely because when we're looking at the research you see sort of what could be done to help individuals rehab for um, an injury but then obviously I haven't got the knowledge or expertise to then apply that to someone so being able to learn about that I think would definitely interest me yeah I think it's good when we do get the crossover because otherwise there is this problem is there researchers being in one building and then the people hands-on dealing with the real public in another building that's where i think some of the that's probably why it takes whatever it is 12 13 years for research to actually get into the clinic door but and when we do get people who do do the crossover like immediately in my mind someone like um dr claire minchel who's very much strength and conditioning researcher but she's now trying her goal is to get that into clinic and most of the people I like are researchers who are trying to get into clinic as well. So um, Gary here has said the BSc in sports therapy covers a wide spectrum and courses tend to be weighted towards either strength and conditioning, sports trauma, exercise rehab or hands on. Depends on who the course lead is um, to the GSTs here. What was the bias on your course? Yeah, so people listening here, have a look at that question from Gary. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear. Joanna has replied, bias on academic courses leans towards the tutor's background research area. Fine. Um, so, Sam, and uh, let's have a little look what I've got on here. Do, 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 do. How about, do you see any of the dangers of academia and it being out of contact with real life at all? Do you kind of get taught that or does it kind of just become part of conversation of kind of 
looking at the evidence but then applying it in a real situation is something entirely different isn't it because you've got an individual in front of you who needs to be talked to and communicated in a certain way is that something you guys talk about or are you quite happy kind of with your faces in books um i think when we're like writing papers and stuff like that we always have to finish the paper saying um how this can apply to a you know what the paper is about or a scenario and stuff and it's always you know we get the mark to write it at the bottom but then in, in actual practice um we never really have that opportunity to to actually put it into practice and i suppose we're all in the research camp um writing the papers and then there's another group actually putting it into practice and maybe it'd be nice to try and bridge that gap together so maybe we Do do the do the um some research as well. Yeah, I think maybe um when we're doing the research, it's sort of we almost get lost within the research and just such a focus on all the technical stuff rather than like Sam said, we almost leave it to other people to then have the job to apply that to an individual. We just get the technical stuff out there, get it all written, looking nice, and then leave someone else with the job to sort of apply it so yeah like yeah. sometimes bridging it would definitely obviously be an area of focus or importance yeah i just wonder how they how they do it it does seem to create an issue and like i say why it takes so long for the research to even reach the clinic door mm. um and it means that often clinicians aren't able to understand the research because it's written by people who aren't necessarily we you know in the same position so it's an interesting one and um, what was your out of interest what were your dissertations in um what did you do because you're a golfer aren't you kieran yeah that's where me and sam differ i took more of a um performance focus in my final year of the undergrad i left the um injury side of it and just focused on the performance so yeah mine was on um the golf swing looking at we got people to try and hit for distance try and hit the ball as far as they could and then try and hit the ball um accurately to try and hit within a small target and sort of see how that affected their golf swing so yeah obviously not a um injury focus at all but still quite interesting i thought where's you sam you were obviously with rugby yeah more interested yeah in mine was um more of a an injury perspective um looking at the risk of landing techniques from a simulated height of the line so with the um the ambition maybe to try and affect the rules on on line up landing and an injury risk was izzy not just trying to lead you down something about concussion that seems to be her main bag isn't it or did she let you just choose yourself <laughs> yeah. i can imagine her going, no, you, I sure just... you want to do concussion concussion is such a good topic <laughs> just keep saying it did she yeah she's trying um, to get me in a cap exactly yeah. and and but and just to make a point you both i guess say you both yeah you both got first in these didn't you we did yeah oh, i'm glad both of you did that would be an awkward moment and did that come as a surprise because i mean that's impressive isn't it or did everyone on the course get it first um for me i would say definitely a surprise um uh yeah sort of journey throughout university first year didn't take it serious at all um none of my immediate family had been to university so i had no clue what to expect um so yeah i didn't take it serious and then second year again was doing okay and then until got to third year, I sort of got my head down a little bit more, started um, to start my work a bit earlier, giving myself more time. And it's obviously a, a lot of time goes into the dissertation. So to end up getting a first in it after you, you know, graft over it and put a lot of work in definitely felt good. Um, and probably for me, maybe a little bit of a surprise. So, yeah. Sam, you expected a first all along? Yeah. No, I was surprised <laughs> as well. Yeah. No, I, I was I was surprised. Um, yeah, it was quite a hard graft. Um, I'd probably say the first two years I didn't put as much into it as the third year. But, um, you know, you just got to knuckle down and go for it by the end. Um, it's nice to know that you yeah, can do that. You can have a dodgy first year and even second year, but as long as you get your head down, yeah. you can still get a first at the end of the third. I, yeah, I remember first year of uni, You've just got everyone walking around and oh first year doesn't count, yeah. doesn't go towards your final grade. So straight away that's out of your head and you're just yeah. living away from home. <laughs> just enjoying <laughs> life really. But yeah, second and third year, get your head down and sort of crack on. 
maybe that's part yeah. of it maybe that's how you actually get into that state of mind anyway you got to enjoy yourself and let out the demons out mm -hmm. for a year or so and um, we've got an interesting question here from ryan i think this is going to be common for quite a few um soft tissue therapists who predominantly learn how to do things with their hands traditionally wise uh, ryan says um i'll bring up a little bit onto the screen but i'll read it from here um i'm coming from a massage background but i find myself wanting to do less and less hi ryan that's very sad we have to talk about that um but yeah i'm potentially looking to go down the research route i would ask your top tips for some looking to someone looking to move from the more practical based field to a more research based field there's a lot of therapy i say sad because there's a lot of therapists who i think take the information probably people like me give the wrong way maybe and start thinking that oh, i need to spend less time massaging and putting hands on people and and i never think that's the case unless you just want to do something else but i think massage and we've talked about this a lot massage is a really powerful tool um it's a it's a the more we know about massage affecting the nervous system which it does and um, that's how we need to develop massage and we know how elites rely on massage and not for the wrong reasons it really can tap into that nervous system like nothing else can um so it's not a case of giving it all up ryan but i understand what you mean you want to know about the academic roots as well and then maybe come back and twist your massage any tips i suppose sam and kieran you haven't come across people like this who've been looking for that but what would you be your um tips for moving into more of a research route would you have to go to university and do it do you think that's the first thing mm, yeah. i'm not sure about having to go to uni um definitely helps obviously we've got uh i think throughout all four years at university we've had uh, a research module so that definitely helps um looking at research obviously the main thing is looking through all previous research and past research it can help you identify maybe where there's little gaps that you could come in and fill that gap with your knowledge um but yeah i'm not sure if universities needed obviously we've got open universities now and just so much stuff is online that's available which could also help i think yeah but. yeah i would just say engage with the literature on the on the stuff that you're um really interested in and really passionate in so have a look for the for the literature first and if you find an area which you you really like then maybe yeah like kieran said the open university or or maybe even university and this this is also maybe what we were saying before about bridging the gap we were thinking of biomechanics to therapy if someone like ryan um is coming from massage you could definitely bridge the gap you've got all the hands-on yeah. experience there if you then like we said look at past literature find a little area that you could maybe sort of exploit i suppose um yeah you can get stuck in there and sort of bridge that gap definitely i think there's definitely advantages and a need there for for more of a crossover between the two um so there you go um that's what to do be one i'm sure other people have done it but yeah I, th I don't know i wonder how i mean i suppose one of the main reasons of going to university is kind of a, the idea you're going to get have more security in getting a job was that kind of a common thing was that something that crossed your mind on doing this because i want to be employed yeah. yeah i think it's almost it's out there isn't it people you hear a lot of people saying oh you need a degree you need a degree well that's what i was hearing so i think that was the main driving force behind it um yeah that was definitely the main reason why i went to university i'd say I, yeah yeah do you think it's going to work with what you know so far i mean imagine if you hadn't done the masters or all right let's 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 rewind a little bit were you tempted not to do the masters could you have gone on to something great after your degree or was it covid that was kind of getting in the way of everything um i think covid affected didn't it sam definitely uh, i don't think there was anything great yeah. i had lined up um but throughout the final year I, I was already thinking of the masters wasn't dead set on it um but i think with a lot of people you know covid threw a spanner in the works and uh that made my decision a lot easier to prolong prolong it by another year because i thought with an extra year got more chance to get that experience that i think a lot of people look for when trying to get jobs so that's what my thought process was yeah i didn't really have a have a backup plan if you like so um i just thought i'm already in university may as well get the masters done now um but now i'm doing my masters and i'm looking at 
you know, jobs and experience. Um, I think that some of those jobs that I probably could could apply for without the masters, but I just wasn't looking enough. Um, but I suppose the masters has helped me, um, you know, improve my skills and and gain knowledge and you know upskill me. So yeah, I guess it's also the question of just in any business, it's who you know, isn't it, and the networking you do and the people you meet. And they're the people who are going to have friends and this and that and recommend you. And I suppose that's um, a big weight as well. Um, it's very important. Sort of the back doors. <laughs> kind of, yeah. And they're not in a nasty way. It's just the way things work, isn't it? You know, mm. just to even get your CV read or in the right pile, it does help it. Um, yeah. Um, obviously, Keith Burnett, if anyone in the STA is interested, Keith Burnett, our own Keith, who's doing a lot of um, work now, research, into um, concussion in rugby and actually becoming very well respected on the topic he started very much from pretty much nothing being told at school you're never going to be anything keith um, and he found quite a lot of kind of snobbery in academia because he came from you know a very poor humble background with very low qualifications and now he's worked himself up um, and now he's actually doing some fantastic research and getting recognized um, as one of the four forefront kind of like concussion experts so have you found any snobbery at all in the process um, where kind of like some people are looked down on because you find out, not you, but they're not kind of in the same kind of background or anything or because academia does sometimes have that kind of infamy, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd say uh, maybe with me, I'm not sure with Sam because he did the A-levels, but there's, there's almost like people maybe thought you weren't deserving to be or they were shocked that like someone like me with um the college degree is it uh, was in the same position as them who had obviously a levels they maybe thought they worked harder or deserved it more i don't know i was almost yeah a bit of mickey taking going on there with having the college route r rather than an a level i'd say maybe a bit of snobbery there you had a bit of that did you how did you deal with that it's interesting yeah not bad i think it's more just um little digs at you but it's fine because Obviously, when I went to college, I knew what I was doing. I wasn't, um, it's not like the, I suppose, the only option I had, but it's such a great option. You got to meet new people, um, which sort of prepared me for uni as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, dealt with it fine. It's just more little comments. I don't think they were sort of meant to be harmful, but maybe just a little joke. Yeah, but I'd say maybe I've heard that before, yeah. Have you got teachers at school then that you'd like to go back to and kind of see, look at me now, or is that on your <laughs> list of things to do? <laughs> uh no i was i was all right in school not a, yeah not a bad lad um yeah. bit of a class clown but i definitely got the work done okay grades but yeah i no, don't want to go back and rub rub anyone's face in it or anything like that fantastic cool i'm um, just having a look at the comments coming in here take me out for one second and now they're all just coming in let's have a look uh bah, 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 bah. let me rewind rewind um that was right. Brian, does Sam and Kieran have oh, I have a question from Brian Huxley here then? Brian says, yeah. Does Sam and Kieran have a special interest within sports and exercise outside of their personal sports? Um or is it all golf? No, I mm. think especially now with the the masters, it sort of opened my eyes to sort of different ways I can go with it. So we're doing quite a lot of running at the minute with and sprinting. Um we've done that Funny throughout that. the year <laughs> with Izzy. Um but that's definitely in my eyes. I've, a lot of stuff we've been doing with you, it's been very interesting to me. So was it Brian? Yeah, Brian. Yeah. Um, mm. Quite interested in the running side of it now. Still golf, I think, is quite an important part, uh, linking with biomechanics. But yeah, mm. running injury and maybe a bit of running performance, so I'm quite interested in as well. Hey, Sam. Welcome back. Um, so yeah, just it was a question from Brian there. Do you Have you kind of developed a special interest within sports and exercise outside of your personal sport, like rugby? Has it introduced you to other sports and appreciate what was going on there? Yeah, definitely. Um, this year, um, we started looking at sprinters. Um, so one of the PhD issues in hand um, set us up to look Maybe this is the Welsh Wi-Fi. This sprinting. is the Welsh thing. Um, <laughs> Sorry, you're just freezing us at this yeah. time. Okay. Yeah, Welsh Wi-Fi. I can see myself lagging. Yeah, got you now. Yep. So what that was about? You got, got me now. Yeah. Hands. He's doing a PhD in what? Yeah. Yeah. So he did his PhD in sprinting, 
um, and he got some of our students to help him out uh, with his mm. biomechanical analysis. And then um, as a kind of an opportunity for future study, um, a couple of our, uh, other students uh, have been helping him with some of the university sprinters. Um, so we're kind of looking at their training, looking at their technique, um, such as center of mass height and how that rises through the sprint. Um, That's okay. You just frozen. And again. we're kind of trying to help them out to try and make them faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're trying to help them to make them faster. Um, but it was something that I I never knew I was interested in until about twelve months ago, probably. But yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying helping the sprinters now. Yeah, which is another, I guess, beauty of going to study is the ideas. If it's a good course, it's just introducing you to ideas and areas which you would never even considered otherwise so that's interesting um kieran you were actually you were a research assistant i was going through and snooping on your linkedin um details you did some research assistant with guided knowledge and you can tell us a little bit about that i did yeah um gareth owen another uh, professor that we work with um sort of introduced me to these guys guided knowledge they've designed uh, a golf suit that you wear because obviously in biomechanics we put the little uh, reflective markers all over your body They've designed this golf suit uh, that you put on sort of skin type. Uh, it's got its own sort of markers on it um, within itself. So what that is, it's for rather than having to come into a lab, they're trying to get that um, going now. I think it's sort of out there in uh, America. They're using that to use out on the golf course, out in the driving range for coaches, like I said, rather than having to come into the lab. So we were just validating their um, their own sort of suit and their app against our gold standard uh, Vicon Nexus. So that was mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. So again, another opportunity that rose just because of someone you were studying under and then they've had somebody right. who wanted this. Great. Yeah, great. Um, let's have a little look at the questions here. Da -da 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 -da. Ryan Smith says, so university for me is such an impractical use of my time. I physically couldn't afford taking the time out. Yeah, I suppose that is a problem. I suppose it all goes, I mean, it's still, I don't know, when I was at university, the government just couldn't give me enough money. I had like, every term this makes you sick i was given money for accommodation given money for books and given pocket money it was fantastic <laughs> um, but that doesn't really happen anymore it's one of the advantages of being old but i guess at the moment it's still like a loan isn't it you, you do get did you find that it was difficult getting assistance or does the government kind of pay back once you're earning a certain amount of work yeah um we start paying it back once we i'm not sure the figure sam is it it's 20 something thousand is it a year you start paying a percentage mm. back um but in first year they obviously they give you your loan in terms so first term i wasn't used to having that much money just chucked in your bank account so <laughs> i definitely spent maybe a bit too much but they've got um the financial advisors in university you can go and speak to people uh, there's like a hardship fund if i think you're really struggling you can fill out a form and they can sort of assess it and then give you a bit of money to help you out as well but yeah it's definitely really helpful uh, in university for that I think it's yeah I think when you're a, a more mature student um yeah it's tricky if you've got things like mortgage and bills and general life like Ryan's saying but I think still I think in the UK there's still a surprising amount of support you can get if you talk to someone if you're showing that the studies are going to help you um kind of progress it might be worth having a chat Ryan to I mean Gary's probably a man as well there might be things you can help um in terms of um loans and um mm. things like that a grant or something yeah maybe yeah and grants i think it's, it's, from what i've seen it's, it can be pretty surprising um when they, they will give you money um brian huxley has said great to see the next generation coming through the ranks there you go guys you are the next generation brilliant <laughs> hopefully we'll work our way up yeah um let's have a little look what i've got more on my crib sheet here um do, 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 do. so where i mean you're obviously what is it two years this masters is it one or two it depends yeah, on doing your place at the moment, yeah 18 yeah yeah um where do you see yourself afterwards go on good question start, yeah very um good yeah so you know i've been looking around a bit now and there's a few sports science jobs and stuff that take my interest um so that's probably my number one um, I would say that some of the skills you learn in university on the computers, um, there's a lot of data analysis and stuff like that. 
Um, so maybe that might be a route for me as well. Perhaps if I'm struggling, um, I quite like doing the data stuff. Um, and if I'm if I'm really struggling again, I might maybe even consider going for a PhD, perhaps. Um, but yeah, it's all just getting on LinkedIn and looking at the opportunities out there. Um, there's loads of sports science um, roles going at the moment and S and C stuff as well. So um, I'll just keep applying at the moment. I think. Yep, sort of the same as Sam. Really. Um, ultimately, I'd love to work within elite sport um with an elite team or something just helping them uh how i can help them with their performance or sort of help with their injury uh, i saw sports therapy association comments in we are three generations away from <laughs> yeah from brian that caught my attention <laughs> that was good one um yeah uh yeah sport sports scientists would be a, a great sort of jump out of a master's but again phd's in the back of my mind we got a couple of emails from our tutors one was on um concussion in football i thought was quite interesting but yeah just trying to weigh it all up really yeah how much do you see um my bias always is the amount of kind of misconception out there um, and the studies kind of show for example with runners that there's a lot of beliefs there which are either very flimsy they have very little evidence or just downright wrong like looking at the whole pronation paradigm for shoes and the idea that stretching is going to reduce risk of injury but it also happens in elite sports where they've got sports scientists in theory looking after them i mean tiger woods for example just thinking of it so bad it's an n equals one but he famously takes advice from various healthcare professionals you think he could have anybody he wanted and the language they use and i'm sure it's topics which you've covered in your degree and masters with with regards to what you're telling your athlete but do you ever see these things where you think we need to get in there and change that these guys the message isn't getting through with elites or is it not something you've come across so much um i think like you said maybe how we're relaying it to athletes even with within research you see things that are written just they're just overcomplicated, like way too much. Um, and that's probably a massive thing for applying that to athletes. You can't just expect them to, because you're from the research side, you can't expect them to understand all these technical terms you're just throwing at them. So being able to relay your knowledge to an athlete so they can understand and then obviously help them with their performance, I think that's maybe a big thing. Hmm. Maybe it is up to without drumming on about the different generations but i think there is a certain traditional old school way of doing things like it's with regards to soft tissue therapy still a, a high proportion of elite athletes will rely on being pummeled to an inch of their life by their sports therapist or physio and they still believe that the more it hurts the better it's doing for them and there is research that shows if you take somebody who's at that level of excellence then it's a bit like the rabbit's foot if you can give them anything which will make them believe that they can beat and get the gold instead of the silver, for example, then you shouldn't really take that away. But it's still perpetuating these myths for the rest of the population that the deeper you go, the better that you're breaking down scar tissue. Let's stick a needle in here and stuff. And in our profession, we think the elites can actually actually do a lot of harm for the rest of the sports, especially when they're on right. Twitter showing their physios doing things to them and stuff, which a lot of them have been doing and they don't see the harm in it. But um why am I ranting and raving on about this? Lost my train of thought now. But yeah, but do you do you feel that there are things you need to change? That it is like you've already mentioned the research is too complicated. Do you take on this kind of like ownership as a new generation, a new breed of sports scientists, maybe, that you've got to change some of the old ways? Uh yeah, I think if we if I sort of push it towards golf again, um, I'd say mainly in the olden day, it wasn't really about distance off the tee, but a lot of research coming out is showing that that can actually aid performance. And I'm not sure if a lot of people in the chat are um, familiar with golf. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, a great player at the minute, um, top professional. He's just gone on this this hunt for distance off the tee using biomechanics. Um, and he's just trying to hit the ball as far as he can, not too bothered where it's going. So there's quite a big thing there, um, maybe changing he's looking to change golf by just hitting the ball further and he's using biomechanics to help him do that um, through the help of a coach, obviously. So maybe from a, that's obviously from a beneficial point rather than your sort of 
I suppose you're saying it's um, sometimes can be bad the elite. Mm. Yeah, That's I suppose as well it's it's um, trying to break down that research and try and relay it in a way in which the general population can understand it. Mm. Um, Sam, you're freezing again, but I'm. Um, Loves it. Yes. It... But. I'm it. Yeah, That's go okay. again. So yeah. Okay. There's, but they're so difficult to understand um, that they're not. They're, they're so complex to read, and there's abbreviations everywhere. Um, so maybe a way in which we could try and convey that message in such a more simpler way may may try and help more people doing stuff that's research informed and evidence based. Mm. Like rugby, for example, rugby kind of single-handedly keeps the whole ice bath kind of thing going, doesn't it? It's still very much used and believes that it's going to really reduce DOMS and maybe, you know. But there's a lot of research coming out now that, that ice could be doing the opposite. And it could be, you know, actually, if it's if it's necessary adaption, inflammatory reaction like that, you could be stopping the body from actually getting stronger. But have you kind of studied things like that at all? Or has that cropped up in terms of like misconceptions and um maybe not so much i'd say no i suppose it's more physiology i'm trying to think if we've done um yeah more physiology maybe that one but yeah just i'm asking the biomechanics what about like <laughs> biomechanics then because like again from a running perspective biomechanics is quite famously a gray area as soon as you get something linking a particular way of moving with risk of injury and other people come out equally as good which will say well these people have got femoral adduction and it's not linked with itb strain or something or there's a lot of contradiction going on who is he could kind of like go on for ages about that but have you found that in your own studies and research that it's a tricky area the human body to kind of pin down a certain movement to risk of injury yeah um i think every time you look at past research you'll think maybe you've got the right answer and you'll look and someone's contradicting what you're saying uh, and then you look at another paper they're backing you up I think it's quite hard to sort of pin down um, sort of a correct way maybe of doing something so like you said it's almost a bit confusing for the athletes really mm. I suppose they don't really know who to believe if there's a lot of different um, opinions and findings from studies I guess mm. What's it like in golf? Is there is what's the biomechanics like in terms of ways of moving, causing or increasing? Is there a successful screening that goes on in golf to determine whether you can get injured or not, or is it a dodgy area? Um, I haven't looked too much into the injury on golf. Uh, I wouldn't say it's too. Well, I suppose it is prevalent. You're swinging at high speed. Or performance, yeah. or performance. Is there a right. more of a is there a blueprint for good performance, or does it do you still see that variability amongst individuals and? Um, golf swing, I'd say, is very uh, obviously it varies a lot with the different participants, but there are a few key movements. Um, the X factor, sort of how your shoulders and hips interact during the swing, uh, and the main thing is your sort of your end point. So getting that club to the ball, sort of in the same position. Well, obviously not the same position, but trying to repeat that as best as possible over and over. So end point variability is quite well very important in golf. Yeah. So there are key movements that sort of. Um, explain uh sort of good performance i'd say do you see much variability amongst the elites in terms of getting the job done or are they all kind of following a pretty similar pattern um i'd say there is still a lot of variation but it all they're all very similar um within maybe a couple of movements from the ball so mm. starting the swing and at the top of the back swing they're in like remarkably different positions but they're all so good at getting that ball um sorry the club down to the ball in the same position that's where they all sort of become similar in that area and rugby sam how's the you, you're obviously more involved in injury for that do you come across kind of con contradicting research or um yeah yeah um so mine was to do with uh acl risk and during landing and it was applied to um Applied to a rugby scenario, but within that context, some studies have found that more flexion doesn't put risk to the ACL, and then some studies have found that um, limited flexion is, is good and bad, and it's all con contradicting. But it doesn't really mean that one study is right or wrong. Um, it just opens questions for another study, and then that study seems to open questions for another, and, and um, you never really get to the bottom of it at the end, but um, it's all interesting stuff. 
That's good. I suppose it therefore prepares you to accept that, yeah, it's not black and white. It just opens up more questions. I remember talking to Ben O'Neill, or Dr. Ben O'Neill, who was one of the kind of legendary running researchers back in the late 80s. And in fact, it should we should really be talking about um, biomechanics because he was the first person to really start using the word biomechanics. Or rather, at the interview, they said, we wanted to do biomechanics. He was like, what's biomechanics? But he was the first one in terms of, yeah, putting human movement together and linking it with performance and that. But even now, and he's still got his research team in, and um, they're still following on from papers, which they did in like the early nineties going, okay, so maybe it's this then, you know, can you imagine yeah. like 30 yeah, years later, still he's still, I did an interview and they're going, no, we need to do something else on that. You know, it's 30 yeah. years on. <laughs> Makes you think, what's the it's point? Crazy. Yeah, it's almost never ended. Yeah. And I suppose the technology just gets, you know, more advanced and they go back and do the same study again, but with that um, little bit more technology. Um, so like me and Kieran are doing now, we're um, trying to develop a force treadmill in the university. So rather than using like tibial accelerometers and stuff, um, hopefully we might be able to collect force data when when um, people are running on the treadmill. Has so, he um, not got that already there? Or is that private? You're not allowed to use that. Is he uses force um, plates? No, so it's kind of just using our treadmill right. and using our force play and trying to um, figure out the mass, basically, that they can both work together. Mm. And then we're also using maybe this from a, a clinical sort of helping standpoint as well. We're using Run 3D, the sort of running app. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and the real-time feedback you get from that to see mm. how that can then change running kinematics to improve performance. So I guess that's more a clinical side. You could see that obviously being used by clinicians and things like that. So, Is that run 3D as in Jessica Bruce? And uh, Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, all right, Jess, cool. Yeah. From Oxford, yeah, Jess, yeah. Um, world champion buggy runner. You know she holds world... Oh, really? Well, actually, her husband, her husband beat her, which I thought was a bit off. But, yeah, she oh, did for a while yeah. hold marathon record for pushing a double buggy. That's a bit unfair um, from the husband, I think. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, love. I'm just beating your world record. <laughs> yeah. Don't um, worry no, about Yeah, it. got a lot of time for Jess. She's great. Oh, of course, you saw on the uh, Run Check Live anyway. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay, then. Um, Gary here oh, loves a bit of golf, Gary. Um, in golf, power output can reach 92.5%, 20 to 30 times a game, typically four hours, combined with walking five to six miles, carrying a bag for the clubs. I'm not good enough or rich enough to have a caddy. Oh, bless. <laughs> yeah, I, I know nothing about golf. I'm showing my ignorance already, but right. um, yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah. Well, go on, no, continue. What are you going to say about that? I was just yeah. going to don't know much about uh, injury in golf, but um, definitely from running, I went. Uh, do we know David Goggins? Have you seen well, the name uh, rings a bell? Yeah. He, he did this challenge. He run four miles every four hours for 48 hours. So me being not experienced in running at all, I just saw it and I thought, yeah, let's go for that. So me and my friend did that and the knees weren't feeling too great after that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and what was your experience of running before that? <sighs> Hardly anything, to be honest. Great. Um, okay, well, there's a surprise. Mm, yeah, it wasn't great at all. Just more of a mental push, I'd say. Oh, I love these challenges. Stick yeah. to the golf, key. <laughs> Stick to the golf, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Well, look, it's, it's really nice of you to give us um, up your time. Um, what have you got planned? Are things changing for you with regards to COVID now? Have you, are you able to have more access to other people to do research on or what are you um, saying? Yeah, we're back in on Monday, actually, next Monday. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing the studies that we just spoke about, the run through d and the treadmill right. one. Excellent. Um, and then also Holly is a PhD student at uni. Um, she just emailed us about taking play, taking part in her study, I think, which is sort of a rugby focused study, um, yeah. just drop jumps and things like that. So it's sort of s starting to open up, which is obviously great for us. Yeah. And then it's dissertations then isn't it? Mm. after that. Yep. How exciting. Fun. <laughs> Very nice. Well, look, it's, I mean, it's, it's really nice. I think someone else said here, I think it was Brian, is blown away by how kind of level-headed you guys seem to be and i am sounding old but it's just um yeah the fact you're kind of 22 years old and doing this and speaking as you are it's just it's brilliant it's quite um inspiring actually to see because we have such a bad painted image of even 22 year olds and 18 year olds so it's really healthy i don't know what you like it's maybe the cam will go off and then both of you will decide to change into these <laughs> monsters but no, it's, it's really encouraging to see you guys it's really nice especially 
as as like we say you're the new generation and it's all part of healthcare provision really even performance is all part of healthcare when you when you're working with athletes and athletes so thank you very much um if people are interested and want to get in contact with you regarding about what you're doing or they have any follow-up questions are you active particularly on social media of a choice or is it best emailing you or what, what can we tell people if they want to talk to you um probably a bit of both i think we were tagged on your uh sports therapy um on instagram and Fantastic. then we're both on linkedin i think we're quite active on that yeah. just our full names um and email if need be but yeah linkedin and probably social media yeah yeah. yeah okay fantastic brilliant so there you go people um let me just check i haven't missed out anybody in the comments if there's any final questions do, 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 do. great chat lads great chat lads thanks for letting us into your world that's a nice way of putting it yeah it's great and ryan Cheers, says ryan. thanks to all three of you all th oh that's me as well thanks mate yeah i'm a lad um <laughs> love listening to it lots of food for thought and then chris kitson as well talking of sports excellence and performance says cheers guys interesting chat good luck with your studies there we go right thanks, thanks matt. matt no worries yeah, at all a lot, matt. we'll be me, matt. we'll be back next tuesday next tuesday we're going to be with david balins um of balins insurance which we're very excited about so i saw a lot of bitching about balance insurance in one of the websites in one of the facebook forms today so yeah we're going to get cool. actual the man behind balance to uh come onto the show and we'll be talking about everything to do with insurance which is obviously a hot subject with us guys so yeah just once again thanks kieran thanks sam um and you, we'll man. no worries we'll see you we'll see you all next tuesday thanks again thanks take care bye-bye